So let's talk about DeFi. Now, why in the world would anybody need to know anything about DeFi? So as of today, there is currently $59 billion locked into DeFi. Just a month ago, this number was shy of $100 billion. Should this continue to catch steam, this will change the course of traditional finance as we know it. Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? Brian Rivera, CPA. And on this channel, I talk all things personal finance, entrepreneurship, and investing. So if this is your first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So why in the world is that $58 billion important? Well, DeFi Pulse, one of the authorities in this space, tracks this number because it, it gives you the, a overall big picture of the health of the DeFi space, but also the total value of crypto committed to a smart contract. So what is DeFi? also known as decentralized finance. Well, it's basically cryptocurrency and blockchain used to manage financial transactions. So the goal with DeFi is really to replace the legacy centralized banking systems to allow for uh, financial transactions such as lending, banking, mortgages, loans, any of those traditional consumer services that you may get at a traditional bank. Well, DeFi is aiming to disrupt this space. So before we know where we're going, we gotta know where we came from, right? So traditional banking systems typically provide everything from banking, mortgages, trading, and they're all regulated by some type of governing body. As a result, consumers like us, we have to use these middlemen to get these services and they earn a profit on every single transaction. So think day trading, commissions, banking, interest. Don't hate the player, hate the game, right? So DeFi aims to disrupt this space and take it away from the middleman and put it directly into you, the consumer's hands. So let's take a look at an example. Imagine you have a $50,000 emergency fund, right? So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna lock that up into a savings account to earn interest. So if you use one of the popular ones like Marcus by Goldman Sachs, you could expect to make about 0.50% interest. So if you locked away that $50,000 emergency fund in that account, you can expect to earn $250. Now, in that same example, maybe you decided to convert your U.S. dollars to a stable coin. So a stable coin and a U.S. dollar have a one to one relationship. So one of the popular ones is USD coin. So let's just say Brian deposited $50,000 into a six month emergency fund at BlockFi, which BlockFi is currently paying 8.6%. In this situation, you can expect to earn total interest $4,300, cutting the middleman's profit out. So there's gonna be four types of DeFi transactions that you wanna be aware of. Number one is gonna be DeFi lending. So DeFi lending allows long-term investors to loan their crypto assets, and in return, they earn interest or rewards. It'll also enable users to borrow against their asset to obtain fiat currency. Number two is gonna be yield farming, also known as liquidity mining. So in simple terms, yield farming is basically depositing your cryptocurrency into a liquidity pool. Once it's inside that liquidity pool, you will earn rewards on your crypto. So number three is gonna be governance tokens. So governance tokens or incentive tokens are tokens that are usually issued by developers to incentivize holders, right? So if you believe in that project, you are more willing to participate in it and so the developers are rewarding you uh, to help shape the future of that project. So one of the most popular ones that you can think of is think of Uniswap, which was designed as a governance token. And so number four, that's gonna be crypto staking. So this is actually what I like to do is basically all you're doing is locking your cryptocurrency in a wallet and in return, you are earning rewards on that particular crypto. So think BlockFi, Celsius, Nexo. I mean, there's a couple of them out there, Yearn Finance, where you can earn rewards on the cryptocurrency that you're holding just by locking it away into a wallet. So now I know I've talked about a lot of good things, a lot of pros about decentralized finance, but I also want to warn that there are some risks and there are some downsides should you decide to participate in this particular space. So with any new asset, there's always widespread risk, particular to DeFi, this has not been uh, stress tested, right? So it hasn't been around long enough. So the system has not been truly tested. So the other thing is, and it's probably one of the things that I had to get around, was there are no consumer protections. So in that example earlier, you remember I was comparing Goldman Sachs versus BlockFi. Well, with Goldman Sachs, you get something called FDIC insurance. And basically what that means is it ensures your account 
up to $250,000. In the event something happens to the bank, they get hacked, your assets are secured. Well, in DeFi, if your assets are hacked or stolen, you have no rights to recoup that asset. So you could actually lose all of your investment. As this is digital and it's software, it has vulnerabilities, so it's prone to hacking. One of the downsides of these lending platforms is that they do require up to 100% of the crypto to be deposited in the form of collateral. And so a lot of times this restricts who has the ability to borrow. And lastly, cryptocurrencies, private keys. If you lose your private keys, you absolutely have no way to recoup your cryptocurrency. There is no way to get another key. Once it is gone, it is gone. So now that you understand what DeFi is, what the risks and the downside, you decide, hey, I'm gonna get started in the DeFi space. How do I get started? Well, step number one is you wanna get a wallet, right? So one of the most popular wallets to use uh, is on the Ethereum blockchain. It's called MetaMask. So the first step is you sign up for a wallet, you get MetaMask, and then you deposit some Ethereum into that Meta wallet. So the next step after you have a wallet is you wanna start trading digital assets. I feel like trading digital assets will give you a feel for how this actually works. And so on the Ethereum blockchain, one of the popular protocols to use is Uniswap. You go to Uniswap and you can start trading assets on a decentralized finance exchange. If you're coming from a trading background, this may feel a little bit awkward because you're not gonna see any market makers. You're not seeing anybody fill orders because all of this is automated. Now, if you are a technical guy where you actually need to see the chart, you can use something like Dex tools which then allows you to kind of see the movements in the form of a chart. So I'd highly recommend starting small, especially if you're not familiar with trading, just use a small amount of capital so that way you can get yourself comfortable of how this stuff works. Now, probably the easiest thing to get started in the DeFi space is using stable coins, right? It's because you are not subject to the fluctuations or the volatility uh, with some of these other cryptocurrencies. So if you're using something like Tether, DAI, USD coin, all this stuff is pegged to the dollar. So you're not getting the volatile movements like a Bitcoin or like an Ethereum might give you. So if you get a stable coin, you can stake it and you can start earning interest on your stable coins. So in conclusion, the future for decentralized finance looks very, very promising. I think the first step obviously is mass adoption. People have to buy into it, they have to trust it, and they have to become familiar with it. It'll be interesting to see if the total value of Locke's assets continues to rise as time goes on to see if this sector of finance can actually get some momentum. So I think the key is gonna be educating people about its potential and how to use it. And the other thing is gonna be, how do you ensure people's assets are safe and they can't be hacked? I think if they knock those two things out, then the future is very promising. So hopefully you learned a thing or two about DeFi. Uh, my goal is always to take a complex idea or concept and make it sound simple. So if you found value in today's video, don't forget to hit that like button. And I sincerely wish you guys the best of luck on your investing journey. Have a good one.